Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to continue our discussion on Java native interface and how to call C and C++ scientific libraries to do intensive computations in C, which is typically much faster, and then just uh, basically grab the results back and bring them into Java. So again, as I mentioned, this you can view this or look at this as just a bridge that Java provides in order to do computation in C and then bring the results back. And uh, actually, this is something that Python heavily uses, especially for the scientific libraries that the SciPy has. So this is a very typical thing to do, and <clears throat> it's very important to be able to do it. So what we said was that uh, we, we looked at the, uh, the steps needed to uh, create this process and uh, we start with creating our class file with the methods that we want to refer to the uh, native libraries. We add the keyword native and then <coughs> use the dash h with the Java compiler to create the header file. And then we have to write our C++ code that includes this header file and also takes advantage of whatever uh, uh, library that we want. And then uh, uh, we compile it and it creates a shared or dynamic library for us, .dll in Windows, .dilib in Mac, and .shared object or SO in Linux. And then we said that in order to tell Java that uh, where this library is we have to use this uh, vm argument virtual machine argument dash java dash d java dot library dot path and this uh, points to a folder that contains our dynamic library and then whenever we want to use this native method for the first time before that we have to tell java to actually load the library into memory and we use a st we typically use a static initializers and the good thing about this approach static initializers is that anytime that the class has a native method and uh, we know that all the static stuff only gets loaded once right so if we put it at a, as a static initializer in a class that has a native method the first time uh, java loads that class into the memory it automatically loads this uh, library also in the memory so we don't need to worry about uh, when to actually load the library and then we said that a very important thing is that the name of the library here should not have the extension so we have to drop this die lib extension and if there is a lib name in the beginning which typically is when the c compiler creates the dynamic we have to also drop that so no lib at the beginning and no extension all right and we said that the best idea for highly automating the process for mixed development is netbeans ide so let's head to NetBeans and continue with our last example. So here in the last example or last lecture, I created this test one class. I created a Java project. I call it test underscore native. And this has a package and then this class test one. And this class has an empty constructor, but it has a native method that's supposed to be multiplying two double numbers and returning the double. All right. And we said that, okay, in the main method, we can create this object and call the object that multiply these two numbers it returns a double result and we can print it and we said that if we it this compiles fine but then if we run it we get a runtime runtime exception unsatisfied linked error because we haven't told java that where the library is and we haven't also told java how when to load it right so java has no clue so what do we do? As I mentioned, in order to create the C library or the C library that is working in operation with this Java library, we right click on this uh, Java file, go to mix uh, tools, mix development, create JNI library project. And this automatically creates a, a C, C project. So I'm going to put it to C++ 11. It doesn't really matter. And then it's a 64-bit uh, architecture, and I'm going to use the GCC, so default GNU Mac. So let's call it the uh, uh, test native C project. All right. So this test native is just the name of my Java project, and then I'm saying that it's a C project. Let's say finish. Okay. So as you can see, it has created this. Uh, so two things, a lot of things happen. First of all. If we go to these properties here and to run, 
you see now uh, NetBeans has automatically added this uh, dash d java dot library dot path and it points to the folder that contains the dynamically so dynamic library in the C project so this fold in the files tab I have the test native this is my Java project folder and test native C it is my uh, C project and you see Net, uh, NetBeans has already created the make file that indicates how to compile stuff, how, what to include and stuff and it has created, created the header file we will look into the details of how to actually manually write this header file but for the sake of simplicity you don't really need to know much about this header file all you need to care about is uh, uh, by default it includes this jni.header which is very important which tells Java to actually how to create the bridge and then this is uh, the header file for this particular method which is multiply and notice the name naming so it always starts with Java Java is capital right underscore uh, the package name and underscore the class name underscore the method name all right so Java underscore is the default is always there and then the package name underscore class name underscore method name the native method and if I hit the uh, let's see if I hit the control or command and click on this it takes me to the C++ code that has been generated so uh, and, uh, so NetBeans has already generated the C++ code which also already imports or includes this header file and this header file imports the library that Java needs for creating the bridge which is jni.h and also it has this declaration of this particular function or method right java underscore test one which is the package and then test one which is the class name and underscore multiply which is the native method name all right now if I hit control and click on this uh, method multiply in the Java file it takes me to its corresponding method in the C++ file so this mixed development in NetBeans ID is extremely useful and extremely easy to use right so if you want to quickly go and change the implementation in the C++ code that you have for this Java native method hit the control click it takes you to the method so this method is supposed to take two parameters j double and j double and by the way there is a naming convention for the type of parameters in uh, c that refer to the java types and you can look at the java native java documentation jni documentation to understand this but basically whenever we have double we have j double whenever we have float for example we have j float all right so every type that starts with j uh, it, uh, it it refers to the Java type, and then J object it refers to the object type. Basically, this test one class. If uh, basically this method needs to have access to some uh, basically instance variables of the class, we can use it using this J object. And this is the JNI pointer environment. So if we need to create something, because again in C and C++, if you allocate some memory to something, you have to also free it. So this uh, environment, this variable environment, which is of the type JNI environment, provides some useful functions that we can use to deal with all these types, right? So here we just want to return param1 times param2. We don't want to do anything fancy, okay? So this has to return a J double and the return is this take this J double param one and this J double param two and then return param one times param two. All right. So the header file is good. And all we need right now uh, uh, basically compile it. So the compile is successful. So let's see what happens in the compile user bin make file clean all right it cleans it it runs the configuration is debug configuration okay and then it including the library see it includes the include folder from the jdk and that's because this uh, if we go back to the header file this jni.header is inside this uh, include folder right include and Darwin this is for I believe Mac OS libraries and then it runs the G++ on the uh, on our class and then it has the hyphen dynamic lib to generate the dynamic library it creates the object file which is the machine compile file 
and then uh, uh, now if we go to the dist folder in our C project it's uh, created a debug folder GNU Mac OS and we see our dynamic library lib test as you can see it has added this lib lib at the beginning right so by default the name is just uh, the name of the project and it adds the lib at the beginning and the extension is dot dialib and as i mentioned when we want to load this into java we have to drop this lib from the beginning so now the c++ is complete our c project this function has been successfully implemented in C, the dynamic file has been generated and NetBeans automatically behind the scenes in the run menu. It has added this folder, GNU slash Mac OS X to our, uh, this is the absolute path to our uh, java.library.path, all right? Dash D java.library.path points to a folder, the absolute path for the folder that contains the dynamic, dynamic library. So, if now that Java knows the dynamic library exists and uh, it knows where to find it and load it, uh, it, it knows where to find it, let's see if we can compile our Java class, which works fine. Let's run it. It is still complains because it still throws the runtime uh, exception unsatisfied link error because so far we have told the the Java where to find the dynamic library that it needs to load, but we haven't told it when to load it, right? So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to say static, create a static initializer and say system dot load library. Okay. And here, as I mentioned, we drop the lib from the beginning. So test underscore native underscore C project. We drop the extension, we drop the lib. All right. Now Java knows where to find the C library because of that VM argument in the run configuration, java.library.path. And also it knows uh, when to load it. And because we're creating a test object here in the main, this is the first time that this test, that test one class is being loaded in the memory. And because this is a static initializer, it runs even before the constructor itself. So compile works fine run you see now we have the uh the native method is working fine 1.1 times 2.2 is basically 242 and again java is not doing the math c c plus plus is doing the math we're just returning back the the result right we're just using the jni bridge to do the computation in c and get the result back now you might be wondering why, why is it that multiplying two numbers is uh, much easier to do in Java anyways. Now obviously that's the case, but uh, for much, first of all, there are many, many C and C++ libraries that have been heavily optimized through the years because C and C++ have been around for much longer than Java. And C and C++ codes, when it deals with math and computation is always faster than Java for heavy intensive computations. So for multiplying two numbers, it might not be, uh, there's no, there might not be no point to call the C code, but for very heavy computations, uh, it's definitely a benefit to be able to just use optimized C code and just get the results back. We're just wrapping the C code using Java, right? Java becomes a wrapper, but that's fine because if there is a C library that is already doing what we want to do and it's, do it, it's doing it in a very efficient way, it's good to do it. Now what you need to understand is that the, the bridge that JNI uh, uh, establishes between Java and C, uh, at the beginning it has some overhead, so it takes a little bit of time, maybe 20, 30 or maybe 40 milliseconds or something to establish this bridge, right? So it has to load the libraries, load some other JNI libraries or whatever. But when the bridge is established, it's like a two-way uh, uh, highway, right? So we say, okay, call this method. It puts, sends these two numbers to the C code through the bridge and gets the results back. So it becomes very fast. So when the bridge is established, actually then calling the native libraries and getting the results back becomes very efficient. So I hope you enjoyed this lecture. We will definitely continue this topic in the future lecture. So please stay tuned and I'll see you in the next one.